Well, it is good to be here, here to consider the word of the Lord uh, together. And once again, welcome everybody. Uh, however, and uh, wherever you're joining us, we are Feltham Evangelical Church joined together, wanting to hear from the Lord this morning. And we can sit continuing our series in the consideration of the the magnificence of our Lord Jesus. And we come to the uh, letter E as we're going through the alphabet, seeking to pick, pick up some of the titles of our Lord. And we're coming to the title of Everlasting Father this morning. Everlasting Father. And we're going to think about what it is to have someone to care for us, someone to protect us, someone to guide us, someone to provide for us. Trust as we come together this morning. The, there is an attractiveness in the whole concept of us having someone to be for us. A father who cares, who provides, who protects, who watches over us. And we offer him today, he is the Lord Jesus Christ, God's special one appointed of God to bring everything back to God and bring us into this great position of blessing and privilege. Someone to care for us. So we want to call us all into the knowledge of this great working of our God that we can be under his care. We can know the fathering care of God in Jesus Christ. In the book of Isaiah, many great themes are brought out, but one in particular is how there is one who is coming. Isaiah is writing about 700 years, a bit, uh, a bit over that, before the Lord Jesus came into uh, this world. And there is one theme there, a key theme, which is about the one who is going to come to turn everything around for the people of Israel who'd messed everything up and we were in a messed up state. And there is one who is going to come and he will rescue them. He will bring everything back. He will restore. Later in the book, it's particularly uh, focused on the servant of the Lord. Israel are the servant of the Lord who've messed up and the servant of the Lord will come to bring them back to God. As we come into this portion of the chapter, we see this figure in verse 6. This portion of the book of Isaiah, Isaiah 9 verse 6. We see this great figure who turns everything around. And we've seen in the opening verses of, of Isaiah chapter 9 how everything is turned around. We see how in verse 1, everything that was in contempt in Zebulun and Naphtali has been made glorious. And then we see in verse 2 how light has come where there is darkness. In verse 3, we see how joy has come, a, a immense joy. So there's a glory, there's a light, there's a, a joy. And then the oppressor has gone. He's been broken in verse 4. And in verse 5, the conflict is over. All of these great things that would speak of a new way of a new life, and we see the one presented to us in verse 6 as the one who has done this. This person, a child born, a son given, this is the one. This is Jesus Christ. I want to think about him this morning with that third title in the list that is given in Isaiah chapter 9 and verse 6, that he is the ever lasting father the everlasting father now one thing we need to establish straight away is this is not confusing who god is our lord jesus is not god the father god is father son and holy spirit so what does it mean when our lord jesus here is referred to as the everlasting father it means that he has the character which is father like he is fatherly in the way he conducts himself. He's not the father in the Godhead, but in the way that he operates, he is fatherlike. 
and Father Lee. So when we come to consider this, this uh, term this morning, we want to first of all think about him as the everlasting Father. The everlasting Father. Our Lord Jesus as the everlasting Father. Well, let's think first of all as of him being everlasting. How long is everlasting? Children, how long is everlasting? It's a long time, isn't it? In fact, it lasts forever. It's forever going back in the past and it's forever going into the future. Our Lord Jesus is one who is without end. He's the Alpha and the Omega, says in the Bible. Right at the beginning, right at the end. He is forever and there is only one who is forever, isn't there? Only one who is forever. And he is God. Our Lord Jesus is God. So Psalm 90, we read, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The everlasting one is God. Here is our Lord Jesus. And so we think about him, everlasting, everlasting. Think about the everlasting father. Another way this term can be, uh, can be presented or can be uh, expressed is he's the father of eternity. He's the father of eternity. When you speak of somebody being the father of something, we think about him being the start of something. For those uh, who might be interested in fashion, a man called Charles Worth, in the 1850s, he started a fashion called haute couture. Some of you may know of it. And he is known as the father of haute couture. And in terms of the service of God, there is a man called William Carey who went out to India. He is known as the father of modern missions. They started with him, the modern missionary movement. And our Lord Jesus is the father of eternity. Isn't that amazing? Eternity came out from him. The Bible says in Colossians 1, all things were made by him and for him. And we get something of the magnificence of the Lord Jesus. He's the originator of eternity. Can you understand that? But he also, he owns eternity. He possesses eternity. A phrase that's been do, used down the word the years very often for somebody who, who is, a, uh, is a father of something is that he possesses something. If somebody possesses wisdom and they think, well, that person's very wise, we'll say they're a father of wisdom because they possess so much wisdom. And here is the Lord Jesus. He's the possessor of eternity. Fellow Christian this morning, you know the one who made eternity. You know the one who possesses eternity as his own possession. You're feeling fragile today. Feeling a bit not sure about what life is about. How things are going to work out through this financial crisis of the corona, associated with the coronavirus outbreak, even your own health situations. You know the one who has not just the whole world in his hands, but the whole universe and the whole of eternity in his hands. So that is the everlasting father, the father of eternity. And we should be led to worship him. He's so magnificent. How can we ever come to the end of, ex of worship for this immense one? Our Lord Jesus Christ, the everlasting Father. But secondly, I want to think this morning about your everlasting Father. Your everlasting Father. As we think about him as your everlasting Father, we're thinking about relationship, aren't we? 
we're thinking about connection. Our everlasting Father is one that we know in a relationship. We are connected with him personally as Father. Now, the first thing we think about in establishing that relationship is that all of us physically have a father. Seed of our fathers was essential in us coming to life. And so it is with ourselves spiritually to know the father care of our Lord Jesus Christ. We need to come into a relationship with him. We need to be born again. Uh, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 that as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. You see, we're all in our sin because of our connection to Adam and we're all in death. We're all in hopelessness. We're all in desperation. But in our Lord Jesus Christ, we are in life. We are brought to life. We are made alive. And as we are made alive, we come into relationship with him. Do you remember a woman in the life of our Lord Jesus Christ in his ministry? She had an issue of blood. Blood had flowed from her for 12 years. And she was in a desperate, desperate state. She tried to find help, but nothing had worked for her. And she came up to the Lord Jesus amongst the crowd one day. And all people bustling around, uh, colliding with the Lord Jesus, no social distancing in that event. And they were all bumping into him. And, the, and this lady touched him. And he said, somebody has touched me. And the like, disciples said, well, that's, that's a nonsense. All these people are touching you. Ah, but he knew the touch of faith. This woman had touched him and she was made whole as a result of that. And that's what happens to us when we come and we touch the Lord Jesus. We come to know him in all of his fatherly goodness. We come into what is this, this, this new creation which is all attached to him, associated with him when we touch him. We are new creatures. We are part of an everlasting creation. The old creation attached to Adam been going down under death, but we're a part of this new creation because we can touch with the, we're in touch with the originator. We come and we find in, the, in our Lord Jesus this new life. So as the everlasting father, he is the source of our, our new life as we think about him as our heavenly father as our everlasting father our lord jesus as our everlasting father i want to think as well that he knows you he knows you he's a father who knows all about you he has a father-like interest in you he knows your name he knows you. He is totally aware of all of your situation and circumstances. He's not an indifferent father. He's a perfect father who takes an interest in you. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. Feel nobody's taking an interest? See, nobody knows anything about you. You feel ignored at this time. There is one who and knows your situation. But here is one who cares for you. Here is one who cares for you. Here is one who is always there for you. Alas, even the best of fathers, they are not around at times, and some of us might have known a situation where a father was never around to care for us, and we never had any experience of a caring father. But here is one we can recommend today in all of his father like interest that he cares. He always cares. The Lord Jesus is our great high priest. 
And the Bible says that he's ascended into the heavens in Hebrews chapter 4. And he says, we do not have a high priest who was unable to sympathize with our weakness, but one who is in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time. He cares and we can come to him with our needs and we can find help in our time of need. Struggling at the moment? Be aware that's one who cares. Deuteronomy chapter 33 would tell us that he cares forever because he's the everlasting father. His care will never run out. He will never walk out on you. He will never die. He is the everlasting father. Some of us have had fathers who are no longer around. But he's the everlasting father. Deuteronomy in chapter 33, we see the eternal God is your dwelling place and underneath are the everlasting arms. Always strong enough. Always there caring for you what's your situation right now he's there to care go and place yourself in his arms children you feeling things concerning you go to this one who cares all of us whatever it is financial situations relationship situations uncertainty about jobs and futures cares his arms are strong enough for all of our situations. When we think about the care of this fatherly Lord Jesus Christ, we're, mix, we're soon mixing in with the whole issues of him being a shepherd to care, because there are very similar things here. Father who cares. He has a shepherd-like role to care for us. Alas, in the Bible, we're told in Ezekiel chapter 34 of shepherds who didn't care. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought, and with force and harshness you have not, you have ruled them. Ah, so sad that that's often true, isn't it? We expose ourselves to those who would have a responsibility over us and they abuse us and it's a terrible thing, but this one will never abuse us. He always cares for us. He is the good shepherd who does what? He lays down his life for the sheep. He cares so much that he gave up his own life that we would be blessed. I tell you, if you're not a Christian this morning, this is, you need the care. Is there anybody else who can compare to this one for all of his beautiful care? So he cares. And as Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. His care is enough. And so we can cast all our cares upon him because he cares for us. He pities us as well. He has a tenderness towards us. He's not an abrasive character. He's not a stern character who we feel indifferent and feel reluctant to approach. He is tender. So Psalm 103 we read, as a father pities, as a father pities his children, so the Lord pit, pities those who fear him has compassion, shows pity, shows tenderness. Here is one, a blues reed he will not break, smoking flax ready to go out, he will not quench. He is the one who is tender. He is the one who provides. He provides for our needs. Psalm 23, again, we, we see that he... He is the one who makes us to lie down in green pastures, leads us beside the still waters. 
Uh, what he provides is always wholesome and good. If you're wondering this morning, shall I trust the Lord Jesus? Is it going to harm my life? A lot of people think that. They think it, it, it can go bad if they trust him. We say no. It always goes well when you trust him. Think about how he guides. He is a father who, who, who's interested. His fatherly interest is he's guiding his children. He's guiding us in a good way. He's guiding us in the paths of righteousness. Uncertain about your future uh, at the moment? Go to him. Go to his word and trust him to lead you into his uh, future. And he so loves us that he won't let us go the wrong way. And sometimes he chastises us and deals with us in, in, in a way which we might feel is hard. But that's what fathers do. Good fathers chastise us. And Hebrews 12 would say that that's for our good. That's for our good. And perhaps you're having to go through a difficulty at this present time. Perhaps it's a health difficulty. Finance. I don't know what your difficulty is, and perhaps it's simply uh, just a time where you just don't know what's going on. What about Joseph and that, uh, that excellent study we had on, on, on Wednesday evening from David, and we thought about Joseph, and he must have wondered what was going on, but God was working a great plan. And in the fatherly care of the Lord Jesus, he's working a great plan and he's protecting us. The Lord Jesus would have looked at Jerusalem and he would have longed to have gathered them like a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. He wanted to protect. We are protected. We are firmly in the strong hand of our everlasting Savior. He protects us. He is the one who is our everlasting Father. Forever. Forever. You ask the question perhaps, well, something might crop up and it, it'll be beyond him. He's the everlasting Father. You think of death. Perhaps you're concerned about death this morning, fellow believer. Perhaps you're wondering, will he be big enough then? Oh, yes, he's an everlasting Father through death. And Noel Todd, he passed to be with the Lord this last Friday, May 15th. And his wife, she expressed it like this. She said, Noel is now safely home. For every believer, there is the promise that we'll be safely home. The everlasting Father will take us through death with all of his care and protection and help. Because, of course, he died to conquer death. He died to triumph over death. He died our death that we may never die. Oh, what good news, isn't it? You don't know that yet. You need to come to Jesus, repent of your sin, which takes you to death and believe in him. Who died on the cross. He is our everlasting father. Things in life run out, don't they? Car insurance that we have is due to expire, expire on June the 19th. If we do nothing about it, then that, ex, that insurance will be finished. It'll be passed, gone. So many things, they last for a time, but our Lord Jesus is our everlasting Father into eternity, a Father forever. A father unto the ages. A father who is always there, always interested. The father of our souls. So he is your everlasting father. He is our everlasting father. And so, what about us as fathers? We thought about the everlasting father. We thought about 
our everlasting father let's think about us as fathers some of you listening to this as fathers our fathers some of you have got fatherly roles should that be leading in church or leading in work or other ways it's a fatherly role we have much to learn from the everlasting father don't we are we like him are we showing this similar character that is in our lord jesus christ do we know those who are under our care i remember being in a, a home many years ago and uh, i remember asking the father how old are your children i remember him he seemed to be aware of this of this at all and and i and I, the household there it just didn't seem to be operating right and it's left me wondering did he really know his children my father-in-law soon after we uh we got married he he said to me i've studied my children i've studied my children if you're a father study your children if you've got a fatherly role study those who are under you know them know what the good things know the bad things know the things that make them operate well those things that are not good for them know your children be careful take an interest in them when they come to you with their difficulties with their problems listen to them don't just dismiss them listen to them everybody listening is such a great ministry that we all need to be involved in fathers be listeners be providers yes providing financially but providing in every way for the wholesome development of our children physically emotionally socially spiritually providing for them guiding them into the true way you know the word of god you must learn the word of god you pass it on to them so that they will go in the good way rebuking them and chastising them you are no good father if you refuse to discipline your children that is what a good father does and we protect them as appropriate according to what is necessary at the relevant ages so we are those who are called to be fathers and we're called to be fathers modeled after the one who is the ultimate father-like character our lord jesus christ how our homes need good fathers everybody be praying for the fathers in feltham evangelical church praying for those who are going to be fathers that they would be good fathers and you younger ones be thinking you younger men be thinking about what it is to take on this role one day of being a father it is an important task so that is the everlasting father our lord jesus the everlasting father if you think about the four titles here the wonderful counsel of the mighty god everlasting father prince of peace as we think about the everlasting father we'll know that all of the all of the counsel he gives is to is to bless those under his care all of the strength that he has as the mighty god is directed to the welfare of those under his care and all of the operations that he has as the everlasting father are the peace would flow into the lives of those under his care. So, as we conclude this morning, here is the most magnificent fatherly figure. Is he not attractive to your souls today? If you're an unbeliever, come and experience this one whose love and care is so majestic. If you are a believer, come once again and know, whatever your situations, that he is one who cares.
He is the best, best Father. So, everlasting Father, our Lord Jesus Christ is such a beautiful, fatherly, father-like figure. Amazing, isn't it, that we can know him and have him watching over our lives. I'm going to come and sing our final hymn then this